Focusing on some other news being unveiled today as Donald Trump unveiled his tax plan. The Republican candidate says he's going to make the tax code simpler by creating fewer tax brackets. He'll also eliminate taxes for individuals who make less than $25,000 a year and families who make less than $50,000. Trump says his tax code will give the economy just the boost it needs. I think you'll see we have a an amazing code. It will be simple. It will be easy. It will be fair. It's graduated. As you get up in income, you pay a little more. Some of the very unfair deductions that certain people have been given who make a lot of money will not be available any longer. But I actually believe they'll do better because I think the economy will grow. It'll grow rapidly and we'll have something very special. Major Garrett was there for the announcement and joins us now. What kind of a Republican proposes more taxes on the rich? Well, a different kind, I suppose. And Donald Trump wants to advertise himself as a different kind of Republican. But in the main, this is straight supply side economic doctrine of the kind Republicans have put forward in presidential campaigns dating back to 1979, when Ronald Reagan ran on a simpler tax code with lower marginal tax rates to boost economic growth by reducing everyone's tax burden. And even when Donald Trump talks about removing deductions or getting hedge fund managers to pay more, you have to go through the details to make sure they actually are. In some respects, hedge fund managers may pay more in carried interest tax, which is one element of the Trump plan, but their overall tax rate may be lower. So net-net, they may not actually pay more in taxes. They just may pay more on one side of the ledger, but less, dramatically less, on the other side. And I know at this news conference, you challenged Donald Trump a bit about that. Let me play it. Would you describe this as a classically supply side tax plan? And if you would, how would you address the Democratic arguments now three decades old that we've tried supply side and created higher deficits and it aggravates income inequality? I just think this is a common sense approach. You know, we could say supply side. You could say there's 15 different names given out for different kinds of reductions or increases. I don't think it's supply side or anything else. I think this is a common sense, well thought out, tax proposal that's going to trigger the economy, going to make everybody go back and really want to work. It's going to create tremendous numbers of jobs. Are you clear how it's not supply side or if it is supply side, why he doesn't mind it being called supply side? I mean, he has a couple of wrinkles. Taking away deductions and tax credits, simplifying the code is sort of the second stage of Ronald Reagan's tax revolution. Mm -hmm. That happened in 1986. Reducing rates, simplifying the code, that happened in 81. But it's all still a part of the same Republican approach to economics, which is those at the higher income levels aren't creating enough jobs. Why? Because they're taxed too much. We have seven tax brackets now, the highest 40 percent. He would take those down to four, and the highest tax bracket would be 25 percent. So that's a tax cut, a significant tax cut. And he argues, well, we won't have deficits because there'll be so much economic growth, so many more jobs created, so much more revenue flying into the Treasury, we won't have those issues. It's exactly what Ronald Reagan said. It's exactly what George W. Bush has said. It's what Bill Clinton ran against successfully as a Democrat in 92 and 96, and what Barack Obama ran against in 2008 and 2012. This is not a new topic, but Republicans are calculating, because the economic growth has been less than impressive throughout the entire Obama presidency, Republican voters especially, and maybe the country writ large, are be, will be more interested in listening to this kind of approach than they have been in the past. Well, you raise an interesting point. We always talk around election time about how pocketbook issues trump, no pun intended, everything else. You know, he's kind of ruined my use of that word, Trump, hasn't he? <laughs> Everyone it's like else now, is too. now I have to say this every time, no pun intended. What when people go to the polls and they cast their ballots, they may care about immigration, they may care about abortion, they may care about education, but mostly what they care about is how much money is in my pocket at the end of every month. Do I have enough money to pay my bills? Is this tax plan, as Trump has presented it, likely to win him any support outside of those who already like Trump? Well, first of all, you have to understand it's very well directed and calculated to win a conversation among whom? Republican primary and caucus voters. That's the first threshold for Donald Trump or any other candidate. You You've got to win or maintain your lead or maintain wherever you are among Republican voters. And this tax plan is drawn very closely to what they are accustomed to hearing and you put in a little populist seasoning on the side, and it makes it a politically attractive document. That's one of the reasons that it was structured this way. Secondarily, 
In a national campaign, we're going to revisit all of these arguments before. Does reducing taxes for the wealthy actually make a difference in the creation of jobs or raising of incomes? Democrats will argue we have 30 years of history on this. It never has. It never will. Trump will say exactly the opposite. Trump says it would cost him money, so um, we'll have to wait and see whether other billionaires come out and protest before there's ever movement toward a Trump Billionaires with plan. pitchforks. It'd be yeah. interesting to see. Yeah, exactly. Major, nice to see you. Thanks.